Here's a good question. Would you say that finding happiness is a phenomenon or more like a skill, something that you can work at? Well, after talking to Josh or Chetty, I'd go with your second option because he seems to be happiest when he's working very hard. He's a rising star in the tennis world. Let's find out what makes him happy on the court and off. In the early grades at primary school, Joshua Chetty didn't strike anyone as a champion in the making. Getting into shape was his first goal, but to everyone's surprise, he had that one in a million hand-eye coordination that made the racket and ball do what he wanted. Till his mid-teens, he trained in Durban and then traveled to the USA to continue at the famed IMG Nick Baltieri Tennis Academy. Having reached the top junior group, he returned to South Africa to continue his career. You play your favorite sport seven days a week and you get paid for it. Perhaps that's an oversimplified look at the life of a professional sports person. And as the saying goes, the grass always seems greener on the other side. To answer my questions today, we're going to chat to someone with a passion for tennis. And Joshua Chetty is going to tell us where the life on the pro circuit really is a bowl of cherries. When he's not touring, Joshua spends an average of four hours a day practicing on the court, plus another three to four hours in the gym. Joshua, welcome to Mela. Oh, it's great to be on the show. How did you come to take up tennis? When I was eight years old, I was actually an overweight child and my mom needed to get me into a sport, obviously. So we were actually driving past the courts and she said, why not tennis? So I said, let me try it out. And I started off, I was pretty bad, but I had a passion for the sport. At what point did you decide that tennis was for you and it was going to be your career choice? And how did your parents react? Throughout my tennis career, since I started at the age of eight, I always knew that this was going to be the sport for me, that this was going to be my career. But I would say at the age of 14, when I decided to move to the US to study tennis, I would say that was the real start of my career when I knew that I was going to do something substantial in the sport. It was difficult taking care of myself, cooking for myself, doing my own laundry, everything like that, but it taught me how to be independent. And now traveling on the road to ATP tournaments, I'm more independent, I can take care of myself, I can do what I have to do, prepare for matches and so forth. You are now ranked internationally. Take us through your breakthrough. Last year was my debut year on the circuit. I started playing Futures events. It's the lower rung of the ATP World Tour and I broke my first ATP point in Gabon against a, a ranked player. It was 42 degrees that day, it was 82% humidity, something like that, and somehow in three and a half hour match, I managed to pull, pull it out. You achieved quite a bit in a single year. What kept you motivated in that year? And take us through the year of achievements. In the last year, my biggest achievements have come, come forth. I've been put on the Davis Cup list to represent the country. I, I'm number one in KwaZulu-Natal now. I'm number nine in South Africa. And it really started when I decided I need to take this more seriously. I need to make tennis my career. Just as how other people have eight to five jobs, I need to say eight to five, I am playing tennis. This is my job. What is your current ranking internationally at the moment? I'm ranked around 1,400 in the world right now. In the last six months, I would say that I dropped around 700 spots. There's only around 2,100 players ranked on the ATP World Tour, but there's many, many players trying to make it. A life of a pro always seems so glamorous. Take us through a day in the life of Joshua Chetty. It's a lot different to what you think it is. There's a lot of traveling, a lot of terminals, a lot of boarding gates, just a lot of traveling in general between tournaments, between venues. You do more traveling than playing, honestly. So a day is really tedious and it's full of training, full of many, many facets to it. You're 20 years young. What keeps you motivated? God keeps me grounded. I'm humbled by the opportunity to play tennis. And I believe that tennis is actually my ministry, how I can minister to people on the road. You must have a wonderful support team. I would say that my support team is the most important part of my tennis. In a sport, being an athlete, the parents don't realize how important they are to their children. They are actually the reason why sometimes the, the children do it, to make their parents proud. And if you can be an emotional support to them, they can go, they can be whoever they want to be. A player needs expert and objective guidance to make it to the top. And who better than John Yule, who was once ranked in the top 50 in the world. 
John has been Joshua's coach right from the start. And when the rising star returned from the USA, he turned to his mentor for guidance. John, what did you think when you first laid eyes on a plump little Joshua all those years ago? My first impression was his enthusiasm. And you know, I have loads of kids coming through here and he just stood out with his love of just being on a tennis court. And that's what stood out for me. Is he an easy person to coach? He is one of the most uh, enjoyable people to coach I've ever had. He latches on to whatever you say immediately, so I don't have to ask him over and over again. I will say something and it'll get done, and that's the way he's always been. So he's been absolutely wonderful to work with. Joshua's parents have been with him on this journey every step of the way, and he would not be where he is today without their love and support. Let's chat to them. Mr. and Mrs. Shetty, how did you feel when Joshua first mentioned to you that he wanted to take up tennis as a career? We wanted him to just pursue his passion and we were willing to assist him and support him all the way. Mrs. Shetty, what are some of the sacrifices you've had to make in order for Joshua to pursue his dream? The sacrifice we had to make was I as a mom had to go up there with him and I was there with him for the first two years at least. I spent five months, came back with him, went back another three months and it was uh, difficult because we're such a close-knit family and especially my husband and I, everything we do, we do it together. But that sacrifice was worth the while. And then after that, Joshua started to do things on his own. He became very independent, started to cook, do his laundry and all. There was no need for me to go back full time and for the next two years. And we really saw Joshua, you know, grow and become so independent. And today when I look at him, I'm just so excited that he chose something that he loves and he's passionate about it. And we will make whatever sacrifices we have to make for him to pursue his career. Joshua is a fitness fanatic and it's hard to imagine him taking any time off at all. But even he needs a break from sport. Just don't be surprised if his idea of relaxation is still pretty active. That's what I mean. What is it about the drums and music that attracts you? It's a good way to let out the stress, let out the anger, you know, bang, bang the drums. On the court, if I get angry, instead of breaking rackets, I can just come and bang the drums. What sacrifices have you had to make to get you to where you are? I had to sacrifice my social life. I had to leave all my friends behind and go train in a foreign country. I had to sacrifice many days going out, whatever. Even with the family, I had to choose tennis over that. I had to choose tennis over a lot of things. Where do you see yourself in, say, five to ten years? I actually see myself at Grand Slam level. I believe that with hard work and perseverance and belief in myself that I can make it. Joshua, you are proof that hard work definitely pays off and we look forward to seeing you climb those ranks in those Grand Slams and representing your country. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now let's get drumming. Okay, let's do it. 